Hello, my name is Federico Corradi and I'm a senior scientist at IMEC in the Netherlands. IMEC is a multinational microchip company and uh, today's talk is about Gyro, a digital spike in neural network architecture for multisensory data analytics. Uh, this work has been carried uh, in collaboration with uh, the TU Eindhoven and in particular with Hido Adrians and Sander Stauk. Drones are exceptional platforms that require to process a large number of sensors simultaneously with a minimal power budget. Uh, to improve drones platform capability, uh, we are looking at how to achieve efficient, uh, fast artificial intelligence at the edge. Uh, the main challenge is to process efficiently deep neural networks to improve key metrics such as energy efficiency, throughput and latency without sacrificing accuracy or increasing hardware cost. Um, at IMEC, uh, our job um, is to develop uh, digital architectures uh, that can execute deep networks with the low latency, uh, high throughput, uh, with the um, energy efficiency uh, high, with a high efficiency performance per watt, uh, without losing accuracy and uh, um, at low hardware cost. For these reasons, in our group, we are looking at how we can efficiently run artificial intelligence or machine learning tasks. In particular, in our group, we are looking at the brain-inspired neural network, namely spiking neural networks. Uh, spiking neural networks are uh, more biorealistic models than uh, traditional deep neural networks. Uh, neurons in uh, spiking nets uh, integrate action potential uh, spikes, which are binary events occurring in time. Uh, the neuron integrated these spikes. Uh, when the membrane potential of the neuron, represented here with the red uh, line, uh, reaches its threshold uh, value, the neuron emits a spike. For these reasons, uh, the neuron is closer to the biological neuron that you see a picture here at uh, the top, uh, in which integrates uh, um, action potential at the dendrites and emit action potential via its axon. Of course, this is a simplification of the neuron, but uh, this simple uh, uh, simplification has exciting implications while building complex neural networks, especially at the architectural level. Uh, the first exciting implication is that uh, when building a spiking neural network, uh, we can circumvent uh, the famous von Neumann bottleneck, uh, which is a limiting factor of uh, current computing technologies. Uh, current computing technologies, in fact, are mostly based on an architecture in which there is the CPU in one side and separated from the memory, and the data is constantly shuffled between CPU and memory. Um, in Gyro, we exploit the principle of uh, near memory compute, implementing each neuron's uh, execution in parallel. Uh, this results in an increased speed and in lower latency. Besides, uh, we also use a design in which computation is driven by the action potential, by the spikes of the neurons. Uh, neurons are activated only if a spike is being directed uh, to them. And finally, uh, to keep the low uh, cost, we also exploit the standard digital FPGA platform, Field Programmable Gator Rate platform. This is because we want to take advantage of uh, advanced digital, digital node technologies and reprogrammabilities of such systems to support multiple neural networks and various uh, applications. Uh, in addition, spiking neural network gives us the opportunity uh, to work uh, um, in systems that are active on demand, as I said, when only spike uh, are produced, uh, but also um, we can optimize neural network to exploit sparsity in time and space, meaning that the computation will only happen um, event driven. And this is what we are exploiting in uh, our gyro architecture. The gyro architecture uh, supports fully connected networks of spiking neurons. At the top, you see the representation of a neuron. It integrates input spikes via its weighted synaptic contact. And whenever it reaches a threshold, the neuron emits a spike. Uh, after the emission of a spike, the neuron stays in the, in the refractory state, T1. 
anti refract uh, during which it is not sensitive uh, to incoming spike um, a network of spiking neurons is formed by interconnected neurons in a layer structure you see that in the bottom uh, left picture uh, depending on how many FPGA resources we have, uh, we can implement this deep network as soon as the network fits on chip. Uh, in other words, as soon as we have enough memory and logic resources. Uh, in fact, Gyro is tailored for inference only and uh, it exploits on chip FPGA resources. Uh, in this video that I'm going to play now, you see, uh, show you a typical network that we can execute uh, with the gyro architecture. This network is a fully connected uh, neural network that has recurrent connections. Uh, it is running now in a generative mode, uh, the use case of the handwritten digit uh, classification. The network is composed of two hidden layers of 500 neurons, and each dot, uh, white dot in the network, represents a spike from a neuron uh, in the network. Uh, the last 10 neurons in the last layer indicate uh, the class of the input digit uh, from 0 uh, to 9. Uh, as you can see, activity is sparse in this network and since this is a fully recurrent network, uh, it can also be used in a generative mode. And uh, this type of network are the type of network that Gyro is currently supporting. More in details, uh, our event-driven massively parallel architecture of spiking neurons is organized in a layer structure. Uh, it supports many neurons per layer and uh, we rely on available on-chip memory for storing the synaptic weights. Uh, all layers uh, and uh, all the neurons uh, run in parallel. Uh, it is an entirely event-driven design and by even driven design we mean that the spikes uh, drive the weight controller to fetch the weight um, uh, to fetch the weight from the block ram or from the on-chip memory ram block ram or ultra ram would support both of them and um, when the weight is fetched it is sent to the neuron array for a neuron update um, neuron runs in parallel and it is a completely event driven uh, architecture. One of the main problems uh, is how we can efficiently map uh, the weights in the on-chip uh, memory. The amount of RAM available uh, limits uh, this. More memory enables more parallelism. However, regular storage also is the implementation and the memory bandwidth uh, is essential as it is the limiting factor for of the performance. Here, uh, in, in this um, diagram, you see an illustration of a 4x4 network of neurons, so 4 visible neurons and 4 hidden neurons, um, in which uh, we have color uh, representing the visible layer, and um, circle, square, triangle, and star, representing the hidden neurons. The mapping of the weight uh, determines the number of memory access, access uh, that we need to, retrieve, uh, to retrieve the weight. For example, uh, with one read access, uh, we can read a wall line or a wall column. So if neuron uh, V1 spike, uh, with the first mapping, with one read, we can read all the synaptic weight for the postsynaptic neurons. However, if we use recurrent connections, we will need additional four reads to read the, uh, the backward weight in the columns. While with the second mapping, uh, we can read the forward and backwards uh, weight with only uh, four reads. In substance, here you can already see that we can formulate the problem of mapping the weight as a parametric optimization problem at the design time, in which the dimensions of the read of the block RAM or memory, uh, memory depth, uh, number of memories, uh, and uh, x and y dimension um, are used uh, as an optimization uh, parameters for maximizing uh, the throughput. Maximizing the throughput means minimizing the, uh, the read required to extract the maximum number of weight. Another important aspect of our design is the fact that we can exploit low precision weights. Again, 
the bit resolution uh, is a parameter uh, in the optimization problem and the bit width resolution um, is the parameter that um, tells us how much uh, resolution we have for each synaptic contact. More in details, uh, the layer structure is organized as follows. Uh, we have a spike queue at the top, uh, the buffers input spikes uh, from the other layers. Could be layer previous to this one or next to this one. Um, the, after uh, the spike queue, we have the weight controller block. The state machine in this block reads from the queue and generate counters. The address decoders generates the addresses, memory addresses, and the fed forward and backward controller multiplex the data coming from the memories. Neuron states uh, store the voltage and the refractory end time for each neuron, and all the neurons are executed in parallel. We have used a simplified version of the leak integrate and far neurons in our digital implementation. Um, in our implementation, a neuron update requires two clock cycles. Uh, in this diagram, uh, you see a representation of the algorithm that we have implemented in digital logic. A spike is encoded with uh, its timestamp and each neuron also stores its previous spike timestamp, uh, such that we can calculate the amount of leakage. Uh, we use B shift to do a rough approximation of the exponential decay. And from the weight controller, uh, we then add the weight. The membrane potential uh, gets updated if we are not in the refractory time. And if the neuron reaches the threshold, it emits a spike. Here you see a test bench showing the input spike, the membrane potential, and, the and for different weight values. Uh, the neuron integrates uh, uh, input and emits a spike when uh, passing uh, its threshold. An example of instantiation in FPGA is shown uh, in this diagram. Inputs to the network are spikes. This can come from uh, spiking sensors such as silicon retina or silicon cochlea, or we have an array of min ray generators. Uh, this min ray generator can encode input values in min rate, and uh, via the axis registers, we can actually set the values of those min rate as well as other parameters in the network. Uh, to read the output of the network, uh, we also use uh, uh, interspike interval calculators uh, that tell us uh, which output neuron is firing the most and uh, uh, that will represent uh, uh, the output class uh, of, the, of the classification of the network. Uh, we can also read the spike output and we can monitor a low pass version of the membrane potential. Everything works uh, with a Python uh, API, and we also exploit the PyNQ uh, framework to be able to reprogram the FPGA uh, at runtime. Uh, this potentially enables us to run different networks in the same FPGA. Of course, this uh, requires software and uh, significantly increases uh, latency. However, uh, it is possible. To evaluate uh, resource utilization, uh, we have implemented in FPGA different uh, networks uh, topology. Here you see 6060 means a network of 16 visible units and 60 hidden uh, neurons, and we also implement network uh, with multiple layers. Um, we have been able to implement uh, in a standard uh, Xilinx ultrascale FPGA, ZU9EG, uh, a network of about 3,000 neurons uh, organized in uh, five layers um, with uh, about uh, um, 1.4 megabyte uh, of synapses. And this is a fully connected uh, network. Here in this table, you see the resource utilization for a different type uh, of network. Um, uh, as you can see, we use uh, some DSP only for reading the mean rate uh, values of the output uh, spike. And uh, the, the amount of DSP equals to the number of uh, uh, output uh, uh, neurons we are using. To compare our design uh, with others, uh, we have run the classical test bench of the handwritten digit recognition uh, MNIST. Uh, 
Uh, in this test bench, uh, we need to classify the input digit of a 28 by 28 uh, input uh, image. Uh, compared to other spiking uh, neural network implementation, and these are all uh, spiking neural network implementation, both in hardware and in software, uh, we achieve a very good uh, accuracy of 99.3%. And uh, uh, that is only 0.1% less than a software implementation uh, of a convolutional spiking neural network uh, using 32-bit floating point, while we are only using 6-bit weight for uh, 6-bit for the weight resolution. Um, in addition, uh, if we compare to other uh, FPGA implementations of spiking neural network, and we have ordered them uh, in time. What we see is that uh, in our design, we achieve very good accuracy, high accuracy, better than anybody else, and uh, a very good energy efficiency in terms of nanojoule per synaptic operation. The power dissipations of our design for uh, a network uh, of the MNIST use case uh, is about 2 watt with a peak throughput of 40 giga synaptic operation per second. And uh, this increase in performance uh, is mainly caused by the fact that we are using uh, on-chip memory and uh, by our mapping strategy. And also by the fact that uh, our uh, decay integrate and fire neurons only, take two, only takes two clock cycle for, exec for execution and uh, we have simplified uh, it greatly also by using the bit shift for calculating the exponential decay. To showcase that uh, we can solve uh, more exciting use cases than the simple MNIST, we have uh, also mapped uh, a use case uh, of sensory fusion. And um, in this use case, uh, we have used a dataset of uh, optical radar data for pixel-wise crop classification. Uh, the problem is the sensory fusion of optical images collected by the rapid eye satellites and fused uh, with the radar-based information that was collected by the Unhabited Aerial Vehicle Synthetic Aperture Radar UAV SAR system. Uh, the problem is to classify uh, the type of crop among seven different uh, classes, and the dataset is labeled and can be used to train deep neural networks. Uh, Gyro is, of course, perfect for solving this problem for, of the inference as we can train deep network and we can convert them into spiking neural network and execute them efficiently in uh, FPGA. And of course, uh, we did exactly that. Uh, we can uh, use standard uh, deep, learning, deep learning frameworks uh, to train a standard analog neural network, a standard deep neural network. Um, we, used, uh, we can use uh, Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Cafe to do the training. Specifically, we used PyTorch in our case. And uh, we can then convert an analog neural network into a spiking neural network using mean rate approach. Uh, in this approach, the mean firing rate of neurons uh, encodes um, encode the real uh, value activations of uh, ReLU neuron uh, in the analog neural network. Once we obtain a spiking neural network, we can then quantize, uh, simulate, and optimize uh, its performance, also by increasing sparsity and uh, by doing an efficient mapping, then we can deploy it into our gyro FPGA for uh, performing efficient inference. After training uh, the network, we successfully deployed it in a, an inference model in the FPGA and uh, we can solve the crop-wise uh, crop lung classification task. What you see here are FPGA uh, measurement and uh, together with the FPGA resources uh, utilization. Uh, we achieved an accuracy of 99.7% um, um, in a, uh, for, for this crop lung classification use case and uh, a peak performance of uh, 31.82 gigasynaptic operation per second with a network of five layers, counting uh, 102 uh, input uh, features encoded using mean rates. So we've used the mean rate generators in this case. And uh, we achieve an energy efficiency of 50 picojoule per synaptic operation at peak throughput. And uh, in this table, you can see the confusion matrix uh, on the test set. 
uh, as you can see uh, in this picture uh, the classification uh, was to classify seven different type of crop of uh, wheat soybean corn broadleaf canola oats and peas from the 102 features that uh, we had available for the, for the classification uh, for each pixel uh, in conclusion uh, i have presented um, uh, our gyro architecture, an efficient and fast digital architecture uh, for spiking neural networks. Uh, our architecture is tailored toward the inference and uh, we have achieved a peak performance of 41.7 uh, giga synaptic operation per second for the MNIST use case and 31.82 um, uh, giga synaptic operation per second in the case of the cropland uh, pixel wise classification task always with an efficiency of 50 picojoule per synaptic operation uh, we have demonstrated that we can reach high accuracy in a sensory fusion task for cropland monitoring uh, our architecture is easily customizable for several applications we can use different uh, fpgas for deploying it and uh, our architecture um, main selling point is the fact that we exploit on chip memories for low power Power and low latency uh, we have uh, we came up with optimization procedures uh, for mapping efficiently um, spiking neural network into FPGA and uh, uh, with this we can enable um, spiking neural network inference at the edge at the cost of only one or two uh, watt depending on the uh, application that uh, we are looking at and uh, with this i would like uh, to conclude and to thank you for for your attention and i will be available now uh, for questions thank you